بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم so now in this section we'll try to uh, discuss many things relating to the dhcp server dynamic host configuration protocol we'll try to see uh, what are the different uh, what is exactly dhcp server and what are the limitations with static ip and as we progress we'll also see uh, the overview of the dhcp and what is the dhcp process uh, how it goes then then we'll try to see what are the different supporting devices what the dhcp is supported here now here mainly the devices in the case of ccnp or enterprise level we will try to make a router or a network switch to do the job of a dhcp server we'll, we'll see how to do that that's something what i uh, will start with and then later on we'll get into the configurations how we can make a router to do the job of a dhcp with a simple and straightforward configurations we'll be using a simple uh, packet tracer simulation to mostly simulate the labs that's going to be sufficient and then later on we'll also make see how we can make a router as a dhcp client dhcp server and additionally there will be uh, some limitations uh, most in the production networks we don't use a router as a dhcp server because of some reasons we'll talk about that and later on we'll also configure one of the lab relating to where you can make uh, l3 switch to do the job of a dhcp as well and finally we'll also uh, talk about the relay agent relay agent is basically providing the ip addresses to the remote subnets not in the local lab on the remote lan and finally we'll also talk about the troubleshooting in the last so let's get started here so let's get back to the dhcp dhcp stands for dynamic host configuration protocol uh, it's a method to automatically assign the ip address not only just ip address we can also assign the subnet mask default gateway dns server like we all know the importance of the ip address so every device in the network must have an ip address without ip address you cannot uh, you cannot use the device, right? Whether it is a router, whether it is a switch, or even if it is a network printer, it has to be assigned with an IP address. Now, there are multiple ways we can assign the IP address. One is we can uh, simply go to the device and we can manually give the IP address. Like I can go to my computer and I can simply go and type in what will be the IP address and what will be the subnet mask and the default gateway and the DNS servers all this information i can uh, simply go and give manually manually means via static method but again the drawbacks with the static is let's let's try to see the drawbacks so this is uh, typically the static method now there are plenty of drawbacks with the static method the main thing is the manual configuration because you need to go to each and every device and we have to configure the ip errors uh, especially it's not a scalable solution so one of the main reason is scalability issues like if you have hundreds of devices it's not possible to go to each and every device and manually configure it because all the configurations goes manual which means uh, practically it is not possible for you to give the ip address to each and every device manually like a simple example if you take you are connecting your you visit the office you need to connect your laptop or you might be connecting uh, let's say a uh, mobile phone to your Wi-Fi network and you expect the device should get an IP and connect to the network and you start using the device as a part of the network. But if you, if, if, if it is a, normally it happens with a dynamic IP, that's what uh, it happens in the backend. So giving the IP address to each and every device manually is not possible. Uh, and of course it has a conflict, uh, configuration complexity because of the manual configuration you need to go to each and every device and do that and adds a management overhead overhead is basically as the size of the network increases it becomes uh, very difficult for the administrator to manually configure on each and every device okay scalability already I discussed uh, it's okay if you have just four or five devices but if you have uh, hundreds of devices and the devices keep changing it's not a practically scalable solution okay uh, of course other other possible reasons we can add like ip address conflicts you might end up giving the same ip address to multiple devices by mistake like 
I might give the same IP to two more more devices by mistake. That can be one of the reason, like error prone, like increasing the risk of configuration errors, like duplicate IP addresses. And of course, it is not scalable, uh, not flexible as well. Most of the time in the production scenarios, it lacks the flexibility because the static IPs are fixed IPs and changing the IPs will be a challenge again. Now, one more reason we can add like security concerns. Security concerns is one of the another reason you can add uh, why we don't uh, prefer to use a static IPs. Like uh, static IPs generally are predictable, it means you assign the IP to one device and you just keep uh, keep on using the same IP address as long as the administrator do not change. So if anyone uh, try to target your device, it may be more easier target compared to the dynamic IP addresses. So that is very less uh, strong, reason, less likely a strong reason to uh, tell, but that is one, what can be one of the reason here. So what is the alternative? The alternative is DHCP, Dynamic Host Configuration Protocol. So mostly nowadays, even if you take any uh, small network, even if I just quickly uh, see my Wi-Fi network, which I am connecting here, if I just go to my network settings, this is the Wi-Fi connection, which I am connecting here. And if I go to this SSID properties, now here you can see uh, the IP address. If we just come down, there is an option here. IP address assignment is automatically done uh, where it is using the DSCP. So this is a Windows 11 machine, slightly a different uh, options you it looks. But again, you can also verify by going to the network places and the other way you can also do that. Okay. Now here I'm getting the IP address from the wireless router, which I am connecting. Of course, everyone using the wireless uh, Wi-Fi routers, they will be pre-configured with DHCPs. So here we'll try to see how we can make it on the router as well. Now, what are the advantages or why we use the DHCP? One of the main reason, it simplifies the network management, especially in a bigger networks, because it's going to automatically assign the IP address we just need to configure the DHCP server and the devices will connect and get the IP address automatically. Whenever you connect any new device, it gets the IP address. Like the simple example is your home Wi-Fi network. Whenever you connect to your wireless or the Wi-Fi network, you will generally see the device gets connected to the Wi-Fi and it gets the IP address and you can start using the devices. Like especially in an office where you have hundreds of devices, it's not possible to use a static IP. So it saves a lot of time as well. Uh, of course, there will be a centralized ma management. Everything you do from the DHCP server, which will make it easy for you for any changes if you want to make in the future, like you want to make some network changes or the IP changes, uh, anything, you can simply go to the uh, DHCP and change it. Like in the future, you might be changing the DNS address or in the future, you might be changing the uh, router address. It's these things, it's easy to change manually on the DHCP server rather than going to individual device. So that's the another reason we can say why we prefer to use DHCP. Uh, of course, the other thing, easier IP management. Now, easier IP management is uh, basically we can say like there is no more conflicts, means there is no more duplication of the same IP that makes easier for the administrator to simply do some configurations and tell the range, tell the DNS. So it's more easier. We'll see when we get into the configurations in event. So if you're already working and you might uh, in a production network, you might already have the DHCP server doing the job. And of course, the other reasons we can say like the reduced uh, network administrator because administrator no need to do much means once you set up the DSCP, you know, even in the future, if you add 100 more devices, the client devices, there is no need to do much changes uh, because that's going to make a one-time configuration. You can, it's easy to troubleshoot as well. And the network administrator generally can focus uh, on other things as well. Means you, you'll say a lot of time uh, if you have the centralized uh, DSCP configurations. And of course, a scalable is another main reason we use, especially when you have hundreds of devices, not hundreds, even if you have thousands of devices, you can just connect them and each and every device can get an IP address uh, from the DHCP server. 
So a simple example, it can be a campus network of any university or any companies where you have a very big campus, you have thousands of devices connected in the network.